After that epic box build, let's start setting up the JK BMS. So this is the 150 amp JK BMS. It's currently behind here. You saw it in the previous episode. I'm not going to dig it out and take the faceplate off. Being that it supports up to 20 cells in series, there are 21 balance leads. We don't need all of them. We only need 1 through 16 plus battery negative and battery positive. So you'll notice the cables come in two different lengths, one of them having a black wire. The black wire is main pack negative. It's going to go on to cell A01 negative. The next line is balance 1, B1. It's going to go to A01 positive. Balance 2 goes to A02 positive. 3 to 3 positive, and so on, until we get to B16, which goes to B16. Uh, I've got it all written down. Let's just start putting labels and crimping. I want to start by saying that the manuals are not that useful for English speakers, so big hat tip to Andy for all of his JKBMS videos. The majority of what I'm doing, I'm basically using his series of videos as my manual. I have assembled a whole bunch of labels for the various wires, including one for the BMS itself, which I will put on the next time I take this faceplate off. So I've changed up the labels a little bit. My fingers are covering the same thing, it's on both sides. Because I'm planning to have six packs, I'm calling this BMS1. All the cells are A1 through 16. So BMS1, battery negative, goes to cell A01, negative terminal. And then you can see the next one is the BMS1, balance lead 1, goes to cell 1, positive. Cell 2 positive, cell 3 positive, and so on. Now, what gauge wire is this? There are no markings that I can see. Is that just because my eyes are no good? Oh yeah, there's some writing on that, but I can't see it. I'll just experiment. So let's try... 14 gauge seems too big. Let's try 16 gauge. How much do I need? Now, I'm going to be mindful because when Andy did this, he pushed one of the wires in too far and crimped onto the insulation, and then he had to go and solder the tip on, which wasn't great. I think I'm going to try about 5 millimeters length. Let's see how that looks. So I'm leaving about 5 millimeters exposed. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to go to a full centimeter and fold it back like I did before. So that's how much I'm leaving this time. Then I can give it a little bit of a twist and fold it on itself. So that when it goes into the barrel of the ring terminal, there's some meat there. So with this much folded over, but back to the roughly 5 millimeter, I'm pushing it through until I just see it stick out the end. Focus, please. There we go. Yep, that feels sturdy. So you've seen me connect enough of these. I don't think you need to sit here and watch me do all of them. I'll be right back. I mean, Mr. Lynx, you keeping me company today? Oh, and in case I didn't mention, this is the 18 gauge cutter that I'm using. Okay, and that's the first cable done. Not labeled, obviously, but crimped. So this gets us up to um, cell 14 positive. Now, which way did this go in? Like that. Okay, so this one is going to be 15 positive, and then 16, and then skip the rest, and the last wire is main pack positive. So these four wires have to come out, which makes sense because it's a 20S BMS. I'm sure in editing it might look like there's been no time passing, but in reality, my daughter woke up, started singing, turned off the camera, and then decided watch some videos. So I watched Andy's video on how to use this internal resistance tester. It'd be nice to get a record of what the internal resistances are of all of these batteries before the final assembly. So I'm going to do that. And I've got a uh, Google spreadsheet that I'm going to record it in. And it's also going to include where all these cables go and whatnot. I'll make that public for you guys. So let's get back to it. You know what? I'm going to put the labels on these now before I forget. So that is main battery negative, which is BMS1, B minus, which goes to battery, um, cell A01 negative terminal. All right. I'm going to throw some music on while I do this. 
13, 12, 11, 1, the final countdown. No, sorry, I will never do that again. I'm intentionally setting them back a little bit so that if I have to cut and re-terminate, I don't run out of wire and have to print off a new label too quickly. I find sometimes when I can't get the, the label right on the wire, especially when it's these smaller wires, I focus on just getting the ends lined up and then you can sort of work your way from the end of the flag into the wire and that takes the unalignment out. Unalignment? Is that even the word? Misalignment? Out? Anyway. First cable done. And this is main pack positive. Which goes to cell 16 positive terminal, which will also go to the same one as this. I was tempted originally to try to get balance lead 16, main pack positive, and the Victron all into the same ring terminal. But I don't see the harm in keeping them separate. And so I'm keeping them separate. Now the last thing I want to do is, because I've got a 16S system and this BMS supports up to 20S, I have four wires that are sitting here useless. I know what Andy did was he just coiled these up and stuck them off to the side. But what I'd like to do is actually just take them out entirely. So I'm hoping I can press down on the little metal piece inside here and slide these out. And I can. Sweet. So that's what I'm going to do. They can't short against anything if they're not in the battery at all. We have this really Spartan second cable that just has the three wires on it with <laughs> eight empty ports. That's okay. Okay, so the last thing now is to put the battery together. But where... Where did my flexible bus bars get to? I know I had more than one. Well, it's a good thing I completely, by accident, happen to have a whole lot of more ring terminals. Because I guess I'm making a fourth version of my flexible bus bars. So after I made my first 4x10 gauge flexible bus bars, Lithium Solar made up a version of it that was really clever. And I want to try it, but slightly modified. What he did was, I'll insert a picture here, right, right there. You see a picture of it now. So you see how it loops up and goes around? I don't have the clearance for mine to loop up because my battery is relatively shallow. So I want to take that idea, but run it on its side. So with that in mind, so what I'm going to do, and I know you can't see this right now, but you'll see it in a minute, is I'm basically creating a figure eight loop. I'm not sure how this is going to work, and I fully expect this to take a couple of tries. The idea, though, is, obviously this is only one of four. I'm going to have to play with this to get this right. But the idea is to get a flexible bus bar that has this loop in it. That way, when the battery shifts, the ring or the loop absorbs the movement, almost like a little spring. So that's the plan. Let's see if it actually works. So this here is 18 centimeters exactly. I'm intentionally cutting a fair bit of the insulation off. And the reason is I want to be able to shift the cables side by side. I know the ends might not end up in the same place because of doing that, but I don't know how the cables are going to react when I try to push them into the barrel and have the loop at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do is crimp the first side on and then with all four of them held together by the one end, futz with the loop and the other end. Now, the tricky part, how to put the loops in all of these and to get all of their ends to line up equally. Yeah, so this is what I was worried about. Even though all of these were cut to 18 centimeters, look at the difference in the length of the wire there. 
because of where they happen to be in the curl. I think 18 might have been far too short. I think I should have tried 25. If I did that, that seems to be a fairly natural loop. Actually, when I do it like this, they all stand apart the same distance, but that lets me keep this pretty flat. So if that's the case, maybe I should do four of them. All right, so if I do 18, 20, 22, and 24, that might work better. And this <laughs> is why I bought a whole spool of this. Of course, this begs the question, how is this going to affect the resistance when you have four strands that are different distances or different lengths? If I made them all, say, 24, I could let their coils be different lengths, which would let them pack flatter, keep all the resistances the same. Hmm, what is best? This idea seemed a lot easier in my head than it's quickly starting to prove to be in practice. If I coil them all over this time, I have to go over the top. You are the shortest, you're next, you're next, and you're next. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep this from splaying apart right now. One of these things, it's incredibly awkward right now, but I know if I did it a few times, I would get the hang of it pretty quickly. There we go. Right now, this is looking really ugly. However, got to suck at something before you can get sort of good at something. How's that for a crazy bus bar? Anyways, that's it. Let's test fit it. Oh, wow. That actually, oh, how well this is coming across. Let me move it back a battery. This is really flexible. They sit within the width of a pair of cells and the resistance is very low. I mean, physical resistance. I haven't tested electrical resistance yet. Probably have made them a bit smaller too. Okay, you know what? This is, this is, this is nice. So I've been playing with Andy's resistance tester. Let's get a baseline. So let's see if we can measure some comparisons in our bus bars. I said in an earlier video that I didn't want to have to rely on special tools. At the same time, if somebody gifted them to me, I'm going to give them a try. So I've got the big U-shape flexible bus bars I made. I have the new super flexible but four different lengths flexible bus bar and my tiny short little four equal lengths bus bar and the bus bar it came with. I'm going to put a link in the description below to Andy's video on how this thing is used and how it works. I am going to use the bus bars. I'm touching the bus bars on the inside of the circles where the bolts go. I'm going to do that on all of them to be consistent. And I know you probably can't see this right now. So I'm seeing 0 0.02 nulla ohms. 0.03, it's kind of floating back and forth. For the 4x flexible, 0.07. That is a non-trivial bit extra resistance. The single cable, now, I don't know if you can see, but the ring has been gouged out there. I'll flip it over and do it on the back. Interesting. This one is 0.15 milliohms. The 4x10 gauge shorter is lower resistance. And this one is 0 0.19, 0 0.18, 0.19. Wow, this coil idea might be dead out of the gate. Well, okay, is that fair to say? The question now becomes, what is more important over the battery's life? This by far measures the lowest resistance. But it's a rigid bus bar, and I'm not entirely confident it sits well on the top of the battery lugs. So the fact that the bar itself is lower resistance doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't make a good contact. So I'm still voting this one out. You're off the island. Between these three, I'm shocked at how much resistance there is in this wire, considering it is one big solid piece. This one is the closest to the original bus bar. It takes a lot of the tension off of the posts simply by being flexible. 
this looped idea, I don't know if it's because of the different lengths or just the fact that there's more length, has by far the highest resistance. Now, you know, another thing it could be as well, N of 1. Maybe it's bad crimp. If I was a testing channel, I'd make a whole bunch of each of them and test them and compare them. I'm not. So I'm thinking as much as I like how little pressure this puts on the posts, this already does a really good job at reducing the pressure on the posts. It has torsional flexibility. So as the battery cells might move when the boat is in motion or your RV is in motion, it does a lot to take, a, take away that pressure and keeps a pretty close low resistance. I think, oh man, I had planned to make a whole bunch of these and test these. I thought this was going to be, damn it. Okay, you know what? For giggles, I'm going to make this one into a simple four by and compare the resistance to see how much of it is down to length. All right, four strand, but longer. The inside of the ring terminals of both, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.15, 0 0.16. Okay, so it's the length. That's just how much resistance there is in the wire. This cable measuring from like the actual cable distance is about 17 millimeters, centimeters. This one is about the same. So these two, despite being different, one being a set of four by 10 gauge and one being a single four gauge, let's see, their resistances should be about the same. 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.15 and holding. 0 0.15 on 18, actually, let me write this down. This one here is, where's the measuring tape? I'm wondering if we can find a correlation happening is, let's call it 235, 0 0.22, 0 0.23, let's call it 0.22. The short one, shorter one, 0 0.07, and that length is, let's call it 75. Do I have a longer cable? It's my longest cable. This one is 305, 0 0.28, 0 0.29, let's call it 0.29. Solid bus bar is 60. Flip it over so I'm not into the scraped off part. 0 0.03. I know this isn't a lot of data, but it looks very roughly to be about 0.1 milliohm per centimeter of either 4 gauge or 4 by 10 gauge. Huh. So there's definitely value in keeping the flexible bus bars as short as possible. Here's a question. Can I take this now? I mean, you can't really see this, but yeah, it still goes on just fine. So making them all the same length was fine. I didn't have to do that funny multiple different lengths. Very first time I've used this and I've already decided to change how I was going to build the battery. I was very sure I was going to do lithium solar's idea of a loop like this. From a pure mechanical perspective, I still like this a lot. One of the things I'm hesitating about even as I talk right now is what's the actual practical implications and the difference in resistance between, what was it, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, and 0.17? Is that really going to be the thing that gives first? Is that going to be the thing that causes the most heat? What I don't have an answer for is what's the resistance just simply in the mating surfaces? If the mating surface resistance is, you know, say 0.5 milliohms, I wonder if I could test that. If I bolted them down, no, if I bolt them down, I can't get the probe up underneath. Anyways, the point I'm getting at is, do you have high enough resistance in other parts of the system where going from 0.05 to 0.15 to 0.25, does it really make a difference? I don't know. This still gives me enough flex in all dimensions to give me the mechanical protection from vibration that I wanted. And it does have a lower resistance. So as much as I was kind of really looking forward to building these and trying these out, we have a wiener. Now, seeing as I can't find where I put all of my flexible bus bars, 
excuse me a few minutes, I'm going to put on the music and make a bunch more. You don't need to see this because you saw it before. Can I interest you in a platter of flexible bus bars? Let's put the battery back together. Finally. Safety McGurgles. Hey, tatters. Ooh. So the posts are all torqued to 2.5 newton meter. Bye, tatters. Let's start connecting the balance leads. Oh, right, before I do the balance leads, I wanted to check their internal resistances because I can. All right, every one of these have the exact same resistance, 0 0.7. Tatters, you're being very lovey right now. What is, what's your resistance? Hmm? Let's measure your resistance. Your resistance is open loop. You're unmeasurable. So I don't know if this is going to ever help in the future, but I'm going to measure the internal resistance of all of my batteries and log it. Interesting. So I have a deviation of 0 0.02 milliohms resistance across the pack. All of my flexible bus bars have exactly the same 0.07 milliohms resistance. Make of that what you will. Let's connect everything now. All right, let's bump the torque wrench back up to, I'm gonna say five Newton meters this time. I don't think we needed to go to six. And if anyone's wondering, I'm going to be tearing this pack apart one more time at least, which is why I'm not worrying about using the alcohol to clean the connectors yet. Oh, it is so nice to see this finally going back together. It's been a while since I pour, pulled it apart. Am I cross writing it? Or is that the one I shorted against? Oh, it's the one I shorted against. Let's torque these up. As I pull these cables back, I'm trying to make sure that the flags are easy to trace. All right, good enough for now. All right. Now, one of the things Andy was saying this can do is measure pack internal resistance. So the BMS is completely disconnected. Let's see what the total resistance now is across the entire pack. 4.1 milliohms across the entire pack. Yep, stabilized at 4.1 milliohms, and I'm currently seeing 53.526 volts. All right, first pin, 3.3, 6, 6, 10, 53.6. Okay, I believe I am ready now to connect this and to turn it on, but I'm also really tired, so I think what I'm going to do is leave it disconnected, have a good sleep, check everything again in the morning. I won't make you watch that again. And then finally turn it back on. New box, new BMS. See you in the morning. Enough cowardice, time to plug it in. Okay, so the BMS is connected. So these two temperature sensors are really too short, but for now I'm taking the first one and I'm putting it down in a little space created by the foam padding to get it towards the bottom. And this one I'm going to tape off towards the top. Neither of these are particularly effective. I would like to have one back center here and the other one front center here, but for now this will do. Okay, so the BMS is connected now, but it's obviously not turning on. To turn it on, we need 5 volts more than it's getting from the pack. And right now, that is 53.6. So I need 58.6 to turn this thing on. So I've got two ways of doing that. 
The first is to break out the old um, iCharger X8 and see if it'll do 60 volts. I don't know if it will. I tried looking at the manual. I could see maximum wattage and maximum amperage, but I couldn't see maximum voltage. So I'm going to go get that and find out. The other trick, of course, is that I have to remember how to use this. How did this go? It needed the balance leads. I might have to watch my own video to remember how to use this. Let's see what power says. Ah, voltage. Here we go. 36.5 volts is as high as it goes. So this will not work. Well, that idea ran out quickly. So my next hope is that the Quattro will do, there it is, the Quattro will do at least 60 volts. Let's go find out. Well, after I put this away. Okay, the lighting's a bit funny, but I'm hoping I'm gonna get at least 60 volts out of this. If I can, then I should be able to touch this to that and boot the BMS. Hopefully. If this doesn't work, then I'm not filming much tonight because I'm going to have to wait for the sun to come up and hope that the uh, MPPT chargers put out more than 60 volts. So it's in charger only mode. Wait for it to turn on. I'm not sure how I can show you this. Oh, no, it's not working. You'll have to just trust me. Oh! Overload, low battery. Yeah, because it's not reading anything. Huh. There's no voltage on the output at all. Yeah, it's just showing low battery. Okay, so this isn't giving me 60 volts. I'm not entirely sure how to turn this thing on right now, because I need 5 volts more than the battery. That's one thing I didn't like about this JKBMS. Oh, for a brief moment I had 36 volts. I suppose one option is I can just plug it in and see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, this is off. I hope this isn't, if this has some text on it, it means I'm about to make a really big mistake probably. So the main battery is off. Okay, so that is now connected. That is off. Put the camera down pointing into the battery because if anything interesting is about to happen, that's where it's going to be. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little red LED there that's going to light up when the BMS comes alive. Wow, this makes me nervous. I know I should just get a 5 volt battery and put it in line like Andy had it, but I don't know where to get 5 volts. This is where an actual bench power supply would come in really useful, but there's got to be an easier way to turn this on. All right, turning it on now. Okay, the Quattro's on, but the main battery disconnect is still off. We're going to hear the Victron here in a second. Okay, that was the Victron. Pressing the precharge resistor did not help. Turning the battery on. Nope, it is still saying no voltage. It's saying overload and low battery. Oh, it booted. Okay, so what I was doing there was I pressed and held the precharge resistor, which shorted across the two terminals. So it's basically like having the switch on. And actually the switch was on, so that didn't help. So I left it in the on position for a little bit. And I'm guessing the Quattro was periodically testing. Okay, let's see if we can find it in the app now. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pairing failure. I thought the password was one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so to review. Powering off the Victron Quattro. Just turn it on and just wait for a minute or two with the battery main terminal connected was enough to power up and boot the, G, uh, the JKBMS. Once it's running, I don't think it matters. I can probably disconnect this now and it should stay running. This is getting power from the battery and then, yeah, it's still on. I know you can't see that, but the little red light is on. The problem now is I'm trying to pair with the BMS, but it doesn't like the password. I thought it was one, two, three, four, five, six. The default password is one, two, three, four. Okay. Ah, okay. So it was one, two, three, four. So I tried one, two, three, four, but mess, I must have made a mistake on the typo. Cell count not equal to settings. Okay. Time to get into our settings. Now, I was watching Andy's videos and taking notes. And 
I have those notes here. First thing we have to do is settings. Verify password. This is where it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So when you first connect, the Bluetooth password is one, two, three, four. The settings password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's already set to lithium iron phosphate. I'm changing the cell count. I know you, I'm not doing a screen record, but that's okay. Andy goes into much greater detail. So I'm just changing it to 16. I'm changing the battery capacity from 40 amps to 280 amps. Okay. Okay, on the cell size. And that's all I'm gonna change initially. And it's set to lithium iron phosphate. There's a lot of stuff under, oh, under advanced settings, but I'm going to actually very shortly stop recording and just go and watch Andy's videos and keep notes of all of the stuff he suggests or recommends. I'll make this document available. I'll put a link to it in the description. Balance. Oh, it's actually balancing already. Oh, no, leave balancing on. Status. Ah, okay, so I don't know if you can see this, and I'm sorry, I'm not running a screen recorder right now. I'm now going to go and attend a little Australian university with Professor Andy and make notes on all of the settings he recommends for the BMS. I'm just gonna leave it balancing. But the battery is alive again. Back in a bit. So I wanted to figure out a lot more before I brought you back, but I'm heading on holidays tomorrow and I figured I'll finish up where I am right now, give you an update on the JK BMS, and I'll put this video up and I'll continue when I get back after the holidays. So to try to turn on this JK BMS is not, it's annoying. Plain and simple. But if I have to turn it on when I'm on the boat and I don't have access to you know shore power like I do currently, I can turn on the generator and that will allow me to turn on the charger from the Quattro. That'll put out enough voltage to boot the JK BMS. So I have an answer to that. So I'm still not entirely keen on that, but there you go. The other issue I've been having with the JK BMS is I find about one in three times when I try to open up the JK BMS app, it sees the BMS, but when I try to connect to it, I get a Bluetooth error message and it just doesn't work. And I have to try it three or four times before it'll finally connect. So it comes up, it always sees the BMS right away, and there's the BMS error message. Oh, it worked this time. Okay, so I wasn't able to reproduce it on camera because of course not, but that is one thing that's been annoying me. The app itself is really nice. I quite like it but it just doesn't connect very often. Another issue I've noticed with the JK BMS, and this is what I was actually holding off. I didn't want to finish the video until I had an answer to this. I think the answer lies in the Victron equipment, but it charged up until I, I've gone through and I've set, I've set the cell over voltage protection to 3.65 volts, and I set the recovery to 3.62, I've never been obligated to charge that long. I've seen it start to take a charge from the Victron, whether it was from the solar or whether it was from the shore power through the Quattro, but it always stops. It wasn't a problem when I was using the Overkill Solar BMS. I just turned things on and it just charged until one of the cells hit 3.65. I've not, it, it's been a real struggle to get the BMS to actually charge up. Like right now the Quattro is sitting at Right now the Quattro is turned on into charger and inverter mode, and it's not charging, even though the highest cell currently is 3.38. I don't know if I need to tell the Quattro and the MPPT chargers to output a higher voltage. I don't know why it's not charging. So I'm thinking I might have to tell the Quattro and the MPPTs to go to, I don't know, 58, 60 volts when they're charging. I, I don't know what the solution is. That's going to be one of the things I'm going to be figuring out when I get back. The Active Balancer is amazing. I love that. I mean, I'm sitting here right now looking at this 0 0.007 millivolts different, or 0 0.007 volts, 7 millivolts deviation across the pack. So it's doing a very good job at keeping the cells balanced. I just don't know why I can't get it to charge all the way up to 3.65. It's a quirky BMS. The Overkill Solar just worked, but its voltage deviation grew a lot larger towards the top and bottom of the state of charge. Pick your poison. So I've got more work to do to figure out how to make this work for me. I'll probably bug Mr. Andy. Hi, Andy. Um, but as of right now, I like it, but it's not perfect. I'm the Digital Mermaid. 
whatever holiday you happen to be celebrating, happy that holiday, and I will see you in a couple of weeks.